Okay, let's see, we're recording in progress. Now we go out and we are uh, going out live on uh, Facebook. There we go. Got it. Good. Hello, everybody. How are you? I'm Alex Bennett. This is uh, Monday, therefore, it must be the big pop up show that we always love doing uh, because it's so much fun and because the people here are so nice. And uh, so we're going to uh, go join them. Let's see here. I have to admit all, okay? Uh, we've got a handful of people ready to go here, and I'm sure more will join us. There's Marjorie Miller right there, ladies and gentlemen, along with Paul Levin, one of her friends, her oldest friend from childhood. Right? I made the surprise move. Of having right. Somebody's got their audio on. Wait a minute. Who is it? I'm wondering. Uh, okay, Wh whoever it was, it's off now. Hello, Edward Berger. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Can't you just say hello? Oh, all right. I'll try that next week. <laughs> <laughs> and look who's in her car. As I live and breathe, it's Mandy O'Brien. Hello, Mandy. Where are you going? Hello. It was probably me because I had my radio up because right when I was joining, I was driving and this motorcycle came by and about killed a bunch of people. So I got distracted. He killed a bunch of people? Well, he, he almost did. Oh, almost did. All right. Because that's how the motorcyclists are in Atlanta. Oh, okay. I see. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, and uh, and when they take him to court, he'll probably want a federal um, a, 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 a federal judge. Uh <laughs> <laughs> and uh, let's see here. There's Scott Boddicker and Len LaFrisco, who we don't see Len LaFrisco's ugly mug. Hey. Are you there? Hey, I'm here. Yeah, but we don't have a picture on okay, you. What's going on here? Okay, I got to get to here. Yeah. What am I doing? There it is. I see it. I'll start video. No, I wanted to, there we go. Hey, there you go. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, ugly mug, huh? Yeah. Real funny. Yeah, an ugly mug. Yeah. <laughs> No, yeah. Anyway. Oh, here comes Charlie Wallace. Hold on a second. There are more to admit. And Brian, and, and of course, uh, Mandy's favorite, Brian Neary. Yeah. Wait a minute. There's Brian. Okay. And we're waiting for Charlie to join. Kevin's coming here. Let's see here. Oh, we got a lot of people here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we got uh, we got uh, Charlie Wallace's. Uh, uh, there we go. There's Charlie. Okay. Hello, Charlie. Well, yes, <laughs> audio on yet. And uh, Kevin, hello to you. And um, I was talking about your daughter to Marjorie last, uh, last night. I think it was Kevin about her going to school in Oregon. And playing the saxophone, and she's already made the band, the marching band. A am I correct, Kevin? <laughs> oh, wait a minute. <laughs> I'll answer for him. Yes, she just had a performance this weekend. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and she, I think she's first saxophone already. You know, she's, she's not even, uh, uh, she's not even in college really yet. <laughs> But uh, uh, is, am I right about that, Kevin? Mike's dead. Wow. Your mic is dead, Kevin. We can't hear you. Well, yes, Alex. That's exactly correct. <laughs> <laughs> Why does he just move his mouth and you can talk for him? <laughs> you look so handsome today. You're number one in the book. Who, me? I look handsome? <laughs> Who looks handsome? Yeah, you. Me? My shirt looks green, huh? Does my shirt look green? It does look green. Yeah, what? Well, bizarre. What, what color is it? It's a blue, like a steel really? blue. Oh, really? Wow. Sometimes yeah. these colors don't come off exactly as they're supposed to be. I've got a red shirt I was wearing the other day, and it was coming off as pink. Mm. So, you know, I mean, uh, it, 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 these cameras don't work perfectly at all. Well, my shirt's bright orange. <laughs> <laughs> and now your shirt says, what does your shirt say? I'm retired. I'm retired. 
This is as dressed up as I get. <laughs> oh, I see. oh, Mandy's a pulling me. She's she's driving. Oh, she's usually driving. driving. Yeah, usually you're driving and Mandy's in an office somewhere. So where are you going, Mandy? Uh oh. Hey, Alex, you're handsome today. <laughs> Her microphone doesn't work. Am I doing anymore. everybody's voice today or what? Bad mic day. I'm back. Oh, you okay? We got Kevin. Okay. What about yes or no? Are you driving? I'm there now. Oh, there. So why are you Sorry. in the car as opposed to in your office as we normally see you? Yeah, I'm going to. Um, I just left the dentist. Oh. So, and so I can't even talk right. And I'm going to. Uh, get my mom's prescription <laughs> at her doctor office they have uh, it's like Kai's permanent they say everything's there so i have to go get her prescription so today is over for you already right pretty much yeah 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 um and uh, let's see. back here so my whole side of my face is yeah and <laughs> and what's the name um uh, uh, brian what's friend brian Brian, what's his name? Mm -hmm. uh, is uh, is is eating lunch because it's what one o'clock out there in California, right? So it's lunchtime. Len, you're not doing lunch. Ah, it's a little late for me. I usually eat lunch early. <laughs> oh, really? And um, have you had lunch yet, uh, Mr. Berger? I have lunch I, right after this show. I turn on your friend Pat St. John. I heat up something for supper. <laughs> All right. You heat up something for supper. Right. Okay, but what did you have for lunch? Oh, uh, well, I had a, a, a turkey sandwich. A turkey sandwich. Okay. Yeah. This is a really interesting show. <laughs> <laughs> what, did, what did you eat? What did you have for lunch today, uh, Charlie? Or have you had, I had a ham and cheese sandwich? It's ham National and... Hamburger Day. Come on. Oh, yeah, it's Cheeseburger I... Day. No, 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 no. I didn't know until just now. <laughs> what, what is the one cent burgers at Wendy's or something like that? Oh, oh is that it? Yeah. I had Zaxby's. Oh, oh, really? And you got a burger today because it's burger day? No, I had a chicken salad. Oh, Zaxby's. I see. Just you won't go along with anything, will you? No. <laughs> well, I didn't know this. I didn't know it was National Hamburger. Chicken salad right here. See, Mandy, you and I are going to get along perfect together. It's, it's, it's National Chicken Salad Day tomorrow. <laughs> Jeez, Brian, you're ruining everything. I eat cheeseburgers. Paula, Paula, what did you have for lunch? It's classified. <laughs> You'll never get that information from me. Like, Ah, is this a, is this the best we can do? I don't eat. Yeah. I don't eat lunch anymore. I just oh, eat dinner. so your your answer was zip. Yeah, yeah. You know what I found out today? This is every now and then you find something out and and it it blows your mind. All right. So I have neuropathy, uh, non diabetic neuropathy, not unlike uh, 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 Charlie. Oh. Fortos, Charlie. Yeah. Charlie, uh, Charlie Fortos. Um, <laughs> oh, dang. Don't mess with him. But he, because he's diabetic. Uh, and, uh, but I'm not. But I still have neuropathy. So I, I'm watching this thing and then I look it up and it's true. Do you know what helps cause neuropathy? It's giving you here take a statin. Oh. oh. Yeah, I take statins. Statins cause uh, neuropathy. I take statins. As do strong antibiotics. That's how yeah. I got mine. Really? Wow. Whoa. As do wow. as does um amlodipine, <laughs> which is a um uh, let's go back. Let's, let's go back to right talking here. about lunch. This is upsetting. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> oh, I, I was amazed to find that out. Wow. Yeah, you know, because I've been taking a statin for years and my me too. Yeah. My uh, neuropathy has gotten worse. Now, in your case, Charlie, uh, your excuse is diabetes. Okay. So yeah, well, I didn't until I was diabetic, I didn't get neuropathy, but 
I've been taking statins for 30 years. For, for I know, cholesterol. I know but uh, they, they have too. a lot of, too. A lot of bad side effects, and that's one of them. So I'm wondering if I should just stop taking them. Yeah. Well, if you want to have a heart attack. Well, I'd rather have a heart attack than not be able to walk around. You know, and that's exactly what they tell you. What they what they tell you, Kevin? That's exactly what they tell you. It's the risk. You want this or do you want that? Yeah. Really? I never knew that that was a, a possibility with statins. Well, mine was either, either you die or you uh, you take the antibiotics. And they were intravenous, and I had no choice because I was fighting off infection in the bone. And the next thing you knew, you had neuropathy. Uh-huh. Because vancomycin in high doses in intravenous at six months, you know, six weeks at a time, every day, twice a day, three or four time sections. Yeah. Wow. It killed it just did they you tell out. you this beforehand? No, 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 no. I mean, why don't they do that? No, they tell you when it's happening. Really? Yeah, and there was a big lawsuit over it, but that all was later on, too. You didn't tell you that either. Yeah, well, I mean, my stat, and I'm wondering why my doctor didn't say, Oh, by the way, this may cause peripheral neuropathy. Are you waving your hand? It's like they didn't tell anybody about the opioids. Marjorie wants to talk. Just I'm her see. husband. Should I allow her to talk? <laughs> if you know what's good for you. Right? Yeah. She's just in the other room. She's got weapons. I got mine after the spine operation. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. And and Mandy? I must be like too, totally naive. What is neuropathy? <laughs> okay. You can't neuropathy. feel pain in your feet. You, well, it goes up from your feet. It goes up your legs. Yeah, yeah. Oh, your legs. yeah it, I, I have numb feet. Okay, and then it goes up a little bit. In the, Me too. And the I trouble call it, they is, call it boot and sock syndrome or uh, glove and sock syndrome. You feel, you feel like, like you have yeah, gloves yeah. and socks on all the time. Mine goes halfway up my calf. Yeah, yeah mine goes to my yeah. knees. You feel like you have socks. Mine goes on. to my knees. So you know what I wear all the time? Socks. So I won't have to feel the neuropathy. <laughs> so is it a complete nut? Like you literally can't feel? So how do you, how would you walk around? Well, well, you do. I do feel. I That's mean, you do feel. what everybody says. But yeah. what, what, what? I umpire doing? with it. I run around umpire. Yeah. I mean, it's not, so it's not like you're paralyzed. You just have a numbness or you just can't feel everything. No. Can, I can't feel hot, cold, feel. or pain. Oh really? I can you know if I, I can stub my toe and I can feel it. Okay. I can well I can I can feel the pressure of something hitting my toe. I don't feel pain from it. Okay. Can relieve the pressure from my toenail by burning a hole. Now, you know what I are you complaining them. about? You only got four of them left anyway. I know. So I got nothing to worry <laughs> you know? about. I have forty percent less to worry about. Yeah, forty. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I uh, um, the other night I'm through with the show, and I've got back here. I have a uh, a green screen that's on a roller that goes down into a roll up thing, and then it, it. And I I turned around and I walked a little bit, and because of my neuropathy, didn't feel that I was hitting the thing. Okay, and I stumble over it and fall. Yep. And I, I injure myself again. Wow. You know, now I, I, I'm afraid to go out for walks because I'm going to fall. And now I'm afraid to walk around the house because I might fall. Oh, man. You know, so. There's no might about it. You're going to fall. <laughs> oh, really? I fall also, all the time. Also, it does something to your balance. It throws your balance off. Well, yeah, you can't feel your feet. Well, it, it's not so much. I, it does sort of, yeah, it throws my balance off, and there's one other thing it does that uh, that's similar to that. But I mean, it's just you know. Yeah, don't close your eyes in the shower. Yes, don't do that. Oh, oh, you know when I close my <laughs> eyes, I feel wobbly. Yeah, that's it. And you I said that to orient yourself without the visual. I, yeah, I said that to my neuro my neurologist, and he said oh, that's because of the neuropathy. Yep. If you didn't have the neuropathy, you could balance with your eyes closed, yep. you know. Um, um, but uh, I, in the shower, you know what we have? We got one of those one of those suction cup handles. 
that go on the side of the shower. Mm-hmm. Yeah, terrific. I don't, great. I don't know if I could get into the shower without it anymore. You know, Be careful those they get loose. Make sure it's yeah. Tight. I don't yeah. It, if I even feel it getting slightly loose, I just resuction it. But yeah, it it's never gotten it only got loose once, and I don't I don't rely on it totally. It came off on mid ones. Huh? It came, it came off. off the wall on mid ones. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but they're very easy to put back on, and they are pretty well suctioned in there. Well, that's what happens when you're an old guy. You know, you got to have your little suction cup handles in the bathtub. And uh, now I'm using a cane when I walk. I don't need it, do I, Marjorie? I mean, I pretty much just hold on to it because I I have it not so much because I uh, I can't walk without it. I just I just want the security. You're afraid. Uh, yeah. Be, ever since I took that big fall a couple of weeks ago. And so I'm afraid to go out without something that could support me. And I'd rely on Marjorie and holding her, her, her hand. However, I was holding her hand when I fell before. So I don't know that she's as good as a cane. Don't you know? hurt Marjorie. No. Thank you. No. But if it's either me or her, I'd rather be her. Uh, <laughs> Alex. <laughs> that was coming. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I had to do something. You know where that comes from when I was a, ch- a child? My father was what you called a hard kidder. In other words, he would kid me all the time. Like that. And like, for instance, I said to him once, I said, um, uh, Dad, I'm going down to L.A. tomorrow. And he said, why can't you go now? (laughs) That was his kind of hard kidding. I loved it. I just loved it. So I started doing it with other people. But most people don't understand hard kidding. I do it all the time. I think it's the funniest friggin' thing ever. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Me and my my buddy do that to each other all the time. We'll be out. A waitress will ask a question. And I'll answer for him in just the most you know the most terrible cut down you could possibly do and and you know we both laugh and she looks at us like what the hell is wrong with this <laughs> yeah jeff how are you doing today good can you hear me now yeah you can mm-hmm. hear me fine. you're fine yeah good deal yeah how's everything up in connecticut yeah it was raining all last night well, it was it last today. night that it started oh. started at night yeah yeah, and wow. a lot of a lot of water. If I'm going to get that much rain, I like to get thunder with it. Don't you like the thunder? No, I don't mind, but we didn't get that. I find it's if we're going to sleep at night, it helps me sleep. I don't know. It's very soothing. There's something about it. Yeah. I don't know if you get more of that being closer to the ocean. Really? We I never get know. thunder out here. Are we closer to the ocean than you? Yeah, you are. Oh, yes, we are. Yeah. Yeah, we are. Yeah, because we got Long Island, which is, a, you know, in between Connecticut and, and New York. Yeah. yeah. And the ocean is uh, Long Island. Yeah, I guess we go down to the end of uh, the Hudson River. We got ocean, right? Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, and Scott Boddicker out there in Texas. How's everything in Texas, Scott? Very dry, very dry here. I don't know if Charlie got a lot of rain, but we didn't get get hardly anything. Got a lot of rain Saturday. Yeah, we didn't nothing. Yeah, everything's dying, including me. Yeah, how's the politics out there? Still the same? No, didn't you hear? Ken Paxton got acquitted. Imagine that. That's (laughs) insane. The Attorney General who Republicans get away with everything. So yeah, yeah. At least he got a trial. I mean, he he's been on he's his other trial has been on hold for seven years. So yeah. See, I don't understand why Republicans. Uh, I don't want to get too political on the show today, yeah. but why Republicans back these horrible people? I mean, horrible <laughs> is horrible, whether you're a Republican or a Democrat, right? But yes. they stand sure. up for them. By the way, did you see what happened with uh, what? What's his name? What's who's the comedian in England? Um, Russell Brand. Russell Brand. Yeah. Are you familiar? Are people familiar yeah. with this? Yeah, familiar. Yeah. What happened to him? Yeah. 
Uh, what's his name? Um, guy with Twitter, <laughs> Twitter X. Uh, uh, Elon, Elon, Musk. Elon Musk. Elon Musk stood up for him. He asked, he said, uh, you know, I'm I'm on his side. I feel he's being wrongly accused. Of what? what? Accused of? Uh, what he's, do do? Been, he's been accused of rape, I guess. Oh. Uh, but this happened many, you know, it's funny. When they accuse these people of these things, they happened many, many years ago. <laughs> and I just don't know that I feel comfortable with that, you know? Uh, when it, it, if it happened that long ago, why are you suddenly being assailed with this information? Uh, it's mm -hmm. not like it hasn't been in the last 10 years where a woman could come forward and say something. And I just I just don't like the fact that a lot of these things they oh like this guy uh, who was on uh, the uh, that uh, the seventy show the seventy show. Uh, I can't remember his name now. Masterson, Masterson Danny Masterson. Danny Masterson. Uh, he finally uh, was found guilty after a second yeah. trial, by the way, of, yeah. uh, of of raping two women. Uh, and he's getting almost a life in prison. Yeah. Uh, the 30, was it 30 or 40 years to life? 30. 30, 30 to life. Yeah. Uh, see, I have to ask you about everything because I can't remember anything anymore. And I, I just, you know, and then you had uh, two of the people that were on the show, uh, which was, um, uh, oh God, Aston uh, Kutcher, Aston Kutcher, and um, Mia, yeah, Mila Kunis. Mila Kunis? Mila Kunis? Yeah. yeah, Mila Kunis wrote a letter to the judge saying nice things about Masterson. Now, of course, he was on the show with them. Yeah, for like nine years. And, and so therefore, he they probably knew him as well as anybody. And they just wrote a letter saying, you know, he's a decent person. We, we've known him to be a decent person. It wasn't anything defending him. It was just saying good things about him because it was the thing you write the judge to kind of say to the judge, go a little easier. This is an okay guy. And they got assailed by everybody just because they were defending, you know, wrote a letter not defending a friend, but standing up for him as a decent, decent person, okay? And uh, and they wrote in the letter where you think that if you, if you put him in jail, he's got daughters, he's got sons, and blah, 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 and he helps the community, and blah, 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 you know, and everybody was getting on their case, their case because they wrote this letter. So they finally had to say, okay, we take it all back. I mean, it seems like peer pressure is now stopping people from doing what they think is right. It may have been, they may have been wrong in their opinion, but they, they were, what they did was what they considered right by their friend. And now the latest thing is um, that we got a union strike going on. Oh, yeah. Right. Now, first of all, let me say, before I start this off, that in the five months since this two strikes started, the writers, and then later on, just to buy about a half a month, the uh, the uh, 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 performers' strike, the SAG after strike, that in the SAG after strike situation, they have only met with the other side. How many times do you think in five months? Two. Twice. Is, it, is it two? Did you see two? No, I don't know. I just I'm I think it's once. Oh, Jesus. And the other side, the writers, have met twice. Wow. That's five months. You should be in there every day talking to each other, right? Getting this thing solved. So now you got Drew Barrymore comes along and says, Well, you know, I'm gonna put my show back on the air. I'm not gonna, yeah. I'm not gonna do have anybody do writing for the show. Just going to ad lib the shows, you know, and uh, but but I want to do it because a lot of people are out of work because of this strike. And I got to thinking about it. And in a way, she's right, because they're taking so long with this damn strike that, OK, let's say they've gone on strike. But let's say you're a makeup person. 
or let's say you're a you're you're a, a, a dresser or somebody who makes uh, costumes for the show or whatever you're on strike too only by by de, de facto simply because these people are on strike you can't go to work I guess uh, Drew Barrymore uh, uh, went back on that. She's and, and what I'm saying is she went back on, yeah. just like Mila Kunis and Aston Kutcher went back on that other thing. And then Bill Maher said he was going to start his show up. And then today, after Drew Barrymore withdrew her thing of going back on the air, he withdrew his as well. <laughs> um, you know, it, it, but in a way, I kind of agree with them only in that this strike is taking so long and there are people who are being impacted by it who aren't performers, aren't writers, but they are people on the show who do a lot of other functions. You know, it takes more than just writers and performers to do it. Camera people, you got craft services, yeah. you got everything like that. And you've got locally, you've got maybe the, the food truck outside yeah, that's it, yeah. studio, you know and and a lot of so the impact upon people who are not in the unions is just as great as it is for the people in the unions and the people in the unions a lot of them hey they made a lot of money they got it all saved up you know uh and i do realize why there should be a strike uh, my our friend ray on the other show mentioned it the other night that what one of the things they're suing for is they don't get residuals if they're on Netflix. Yeah, I didn't realize that. Wow. Yeah, I I didn't stop that. I if somebody had said, I would have gone. Of course they don't. You know, uh, because the only time that I get residuals on, let's say, a movie I might have made, is where they then sell it to Netflix, or then when they put it on DVD. All right. But there's only one payment each time, and so they just figured out oh, it's one payment for for you did a thing for us on uh, on Netflix, but you know you should get paid a little more for that, just because it's going to run forever. Yes, uh, yeah. Paula. Oh, does anybody understand why the two sides have met so seldom? What what's the reason for that? Um, I have no idea. Yeah, well, that's, but it, that's... Makes, it makes me as a union member, it makes me kind of mad, be, not because I'm losing out any work because I wouldn't get hired anyway. But um, uh, I, I feel uh, really mad at the fact that they're taking that cavalier and attitude. But who is taking that cavalier and attitude? Is it which side is taking the, ad, the attitude? I, I think it's mean? both sides. I think it's both sides. I mean, I haven't read anything. I haven't read anything where you know Fran Drescher is out there yelling and screaming. Oh, they won't meet with us. Yeah, I haven't seen that at all. So I just want to hear her yelling anything. Well, you know, I mean, she's the she's the union president. Has anybody has anybody here gone gone through a strike? Anybody? No, I've have I gone through a strike? Not really. No, no, no. I haven't either. But I have. Uh, uh, once upon a time, I I benefited from uh, a union going on strike, and that's a long time ago when I was a, a high school teacher. Yeah, as a teacher, uh, mm -hmm. and the, the teachers went on strike, and you, you can imagine the disruption of that. But if they hadn't gone on strike, and and the other side. I come to think of it, there were two occasions where uh, where I was close to a strike. It is not fun mm -hmm. um, it, to to be somebody who was on strike. It's not fun to not to not go to work. You know when it's fun. Think of my situation. When it's fun is when you're Tom Cruise. <laughs> yeah. Well, when yeah, but when, but when it, st it still doesn't answer the question. I mean, I I I understand your 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 position, but why have they who 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 do you hold responsible for the fact that they haven't been meeting and 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 getting any of their work done, which is negotiating? Well, you know, they call my union a labor union, and I have yet to define what the labor is exactly. <laughs> you know. I mean, it's a it's a craft union. 
and they they don't think of themselves that way and they really should it, it is a craft union uh and uh it's uh you know i mean it's it's just i think i don't think they know how to strike properly i think the uaw knows how to you know um they, you, know, they the, do. you know the best strike i ever saw if you ever get a chance go online see if you can find some footage of the wall the strike against walt disney years ago uh, in the four to late 40s right and they held a strike against disney the uh, animators and everybody else and those are the people you don't want to have go on strike against you because they make the best signs <laughs> <laughs> i mean there were um, the artwork <clears throat> some of these signs I, it was amazing just amazing i don't think we have the same kind of arguments as compared to what we used to have where yeah. people were really at home and then going out there and running on the street screaming yelling and all that kind of stuff i think it's a lot more uh, people just sit home don't think about it well i think it's good that a lot of unions now are striking you know, that we're finally seeing some union action again, because I think unions improve the working man's yeah. ability. Especially when the company, especially when the company is making big money and, and the stockholders are making big money and yeah. it's not translating down to the workers. What is it? It was like the, the CEO gets 230 times more than the than the average worker every month or something. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. My father was a musician and belonged to the musicians union, and he was very, very pro union, you know. And the reason why the musicians needed a union was like he played a violin in the orchestra, say. And uh, he's not as important as the somebody who does something, right? So these people needed to make a living. So they, they this was their way of making a living, of having a union, a strong union, very strong union at that time. A guy by the name of Petrillo ran the union at that time. And it was a tough, tough union. And uh, I always thought that was wonderful. He And he believed in unions 100%. So I've always been very pro-union. Well, you were in a union. union, I've always found is kind of a joke. Because they really, as I say, they're a craft organization. They're not, they're not a union, so to speak. <laughs> you know? Um, I, I look at a guy in the UAW. That's, that's, that's the union, okay? That's a labor union. And then they're doing hard labor, too. You know? And I, uh, but I just, I, you know, I, I remember once I went to a union meeting. And um, they, um, I, I, I was looking through the brochure of all the things they were going to bring up that they were going to, you know, pass monetarily. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was a thing where I felt they could save money. Oh, they were going to raise the the uh, the dues on the members. And so I got up, and I said, uh, I just noticed here. We're trying to raise the dues so the union can make $28,000. That was the claim, okay? I said, and I just looked here. You know what costs us $28,000? That lousy magazine you come out with. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I don't know that I want to pay $28,000 a year to see a bunch of pictures of one person shaking another person's hand. I said, do away with that or mimeograph it, or do it some way that it's really cheap, and pass that on to the uh, membership in not raising their uh, their taxes, their uh, dues. The next word I heard out of the mouth of them was, sit down. <laughs> <laughs> that stupid magazine was more important to them than their membership not having to pay um, dues and you gotta understand in my union maybe only 20 percent of the union membership actually has a job mm. you know so those people who are paying dues could 
barely afford it, you know? So that, that, I've never been that happy with my union. You know, I had a big fight with my union once because I, uh, this was in San Francisco. Uh, I decided to become a signatory to the union because I had a company and I produced uh, concerts and things like that. But I also produced television shows and the like. And I felt I should be a member of uh, my, my company should be a signatory to the union. Mm -hmm. So I became a signatory to the union. And as part of that, I started paying um, myself a salary. And then out of my salary, I would pay pension and welfare to the union. Paid pension and welfare for about a year. And when I finally had to collect on the well on the uh, on the on the health care, they said, Oh, you can't do that. This is a sham. Hmm. And I'm going, then why were you taking my money for a year? You know, I wasn't doing this to get in health insurance. I could afford it on my own. I did it because I want my company to be a signatory to the union. Well, this is just a sham. I said, well, then take your union signatory and shut up. <laughs> that got me very mad at them. And on several other occasions, I've had reasons to get mad at them. They, mm -hmm. they, they lost me a job once, not because I was not union and whatever, but they put the pressure on the radio station to do something about hiring me or not hiring me or not doing so it wasn't a matter of hiring me but they put pressure on the boss to the point where he got so mad he fired me wow you know so the union actually lost me a job so mm -hmm. i've never been happy with this union but i'll tell you i'll still stand up for it 100 percent because I, i'm a member of the unions i've always said not for myself but for the person i'm sitting next to because I can go in and negotiate. I could go in in those days and negotiate a great price for myself. But the guy sitting next to me doing the newscast, he didn't have that negotiating power. And I felt he should. And a union gave him that negotiating power. You know, and so therefore, I've, I've always been a very strong union guy. But my union, it's very, it's very hard to stay wedded to that union because they're such idiots. You know. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so what, where else are we? What else is new? Hmm. Anybody seen any good TV shows lately or movies? Saw a good football game yesterday. Yeah. What, oh, what fo there was a good football game on yesterday, wasn't there? What was it? <laughs> oh, no, the Cowboys and the Jets. The Cowboys and the Jets? Was that yeah. what you were watching? No, Aaron Rodgers, come on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, that's, I wish I could make that kind of money. Yeah. You know? Well, he played for seven minutes or something like <laughs> Yeah. Not even. Not plays. Not plays. Four. <laughs> and does he get the whole 65 million, 75 million? Yeah, 75 guaranteed. Guaranteed. Yeah. Yep. Guaranteed no matter what. That's right. what it seems. Yep. And if that was guaranteed, was he also have had the ability to make more than that? Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. Now, I, I imagine, though, you know, you could say, oh, that's too bad, because Aaron Rodgers is probably bothered by it because he'd like, probably rather play than just yeah. collect the money. Yeah. You know, the average football um, tenure is 4.8 years, something like that. They yeah. don't play long. they got to make the money when they can. Yeah, when they can. Mm -hmm. And why is it that short? Because of injuries? Absolutely. Usually, yeah. They had a guy on TV <laughs> They do ads for these, uh, you know, fruits and vegetables in a capsule. Mm -hmm. And uh, this guy was a former football player. And he said, I'm not feeling quite myself these days. So I've started taking my fruits and vegetables in a pill or whatever. <laughs> and yeah, going, bal balance of nature, right? Balance yeah. of nature. Yeah. yeah. Fox's favorite. Yeah. Uh, they're everywhere, though. They're yeah, on I there. know they are. They're but... everywhere. They're around town more than a cheap suit like my father. Yep. So, yep. Um, and and um, he the guy was saying that he he he's taken them because it's made him a hundred percent better. What do you mean the brain damage is not like <laughs> these fruits and vegetables? And by the way, if you've got to get all your fruits and vegetables through a pill, 
that's pretty sad and doesn't it speaks volumes about your nutrition yeah <laughs> jetsons do that was that on the jetsons <laughs> Was that on the yeah. Jetsons? Remember the pill comes out, they have the food fixing. Yeah. The, the, yeah. The, the yeah. That was our, that was our whole meal. <clears throat> you know, I never liked the Jetsons. No. No. Yeah, I never liked the Jetsons. Did you watch Jane, the Jetsons, Marjorie? Jane was pretty hot. <laughs> <laughs> Who looked pretty hot? Jane. Jane, his wife. You know, yeah, Jane, Jane, his wife. Jane. You're going after his wife? <laughs> who is the sexiest? Like who is Rosie. the sexiest animated wife of all time? Oh, Jessica Rabbit. Oh, no, yeah. no that's oh, not. No, that, <laughs> that's not like no, no, she wasn't Rabbit. any. She wasn't anybody's wife. Oh, sorry. Yeah, she was. She was, she was married. Wasn't she married to Roger Rabbit? Yeah, no. they just married to Roger Rabbit. Yeah. Right. <laughs> what about Mark Roger Rabbit? Yeah, Mark Mark Rabbit. Were Roger they married? Rabbit. I don't know. Well, okay, excluding Jessica Rabbit. <laughs> Mark I'll, away, I'll go back to her progenitor, which was <laughs> Tex Avery's Red Riding Hood. Yeah. Who Jessica Rabbit was based on. Mm -hmm. That was hot. But you know who I always found hot was is is uh on Family Guy. Uh, well, yeah. Uh, what's her uh, name? <laughs> yeah. Sure. The wife. The wife? Huh? The wife? Yeah. I've always found her a hot cartoon character. <laughs> and, and one time, yes, yes. Uh, I just wanted to contribute um, Jessica Rabbit's famous line. I'm not bad. They just draw me that way. Yeah. <laughs> just draw me that way. <laughs> but uh, I had on, yeah, my, my thing with names today is just horrible. I had the woman on who plays her voice, does her voice. Uh, uh come on everybody you come up with it oh uh, yeah i know i'm shot know. here today oh she's oh she, she was in uh, uh mrs mazel she was in mrs mazel too oh my god she was amazing in that yeah Bam. Um, what the hell's her name she came and did my show and Lois griffin, griffin and it's alex bornstein alex bornstein <laughs> yes 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 and i had her on my show and afterwards i said that Albert, I said, boy, I just, boy, I just missed out on a good bet because I've always been hot about this woman as a cartoon character, and I should have gotten her to do Lois Griffin and me having sex with Lois. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, I think Lois Griffin's hot. Am I wrong? Uh, no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, 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 Mandy, did you raise your hand? I just did like that. I I guess so, but I don't know if you heard me. I was like, "Who's not? Who thinks Marge Simpson?" <laughs> I was joking. No. Marge Simpson's more housewifey. Yeah. yeah, you know, you know, voiceover work is really good if you can get it. Look at Tom Kenny. Holy crap! Yeah. Oh, my friend Tom Kenny. Yeah. Uh, people say, "Well, who's Tom Kenny?" And I had this comedian on for years on my radio show in San Francisco named Tom Kenny. And so he went down to Hollywood and uh, he had a couple of friends who were doing voice work. And so he started doing voice work and he got a voice job and he's now had it for the last over 20 years, I think. Yep, easy. He's the voice of SpongeBob SquarePants. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> And every time he does, he's he's been making money for years of SpongeBob yeah. SquarePants. And uh, I mean, it's so good that like they make a doll of SpongeBob and you pull the string and the voice goes, comes, he makes money off of that. Wow. Wow. So, I mean, SpongeBob talk about was a great cartoon. I mean, that was out before my kids came along, I mean, just a few years, but I mean, they watched it the whole time they were, you know, grown up through till middle school. I mean, they loved yep. it. it. And it that, was really funny. I mean, it that, actually was funny. Yeah. That and Ren and Stimpy was great. Ren, oh, yeah. Ren and Stimpy. In fact, back up here on my wall, I have a, uh, I could go get it and bring it down, but I'm not going to do that now. But I, I have. It's your fault. 
Huh? Yeah. <laughs> you don't fall. Yeah, you don't get the ladders. You fall if you to Take away it. all yeah, the ladders. I, I'd fall if I try to get up out of the chair here. Um, <laughs> but it's a, it's a, a pencil drawing of Ren and Stimpy with a balloon thing on top that says "Thanks for the uh, thanks for the support, Alex." Oh, that's awesome. And it was yeah. drawn by a, 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 who did it? Uh, Chris Falusi signed it, but also there was one other person that did it as well. I used to watch it as much as they did. Yeah. <laughs> My kids. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Ren and Stimpy was the best cartoon show ever. I mean, oh, I yeah. love that show because it was. I so feel like SpongeBob, kind of like some of the jokes were kind of like the Flintstones. You found out later that some of those jokes were aimed at adults. Like, adult. Oh, yeah. That's kind of how SpongeBob is, I think. This is yeah, Puff I think uh, SpongeBob evolved out of Ren and Stimpy, kind of. What were you going to say, Lynn? Um, uh, the the Mrs. Puff character, the driving instructor, opened yeah. up his, opened up uh, SpongeBob's uh, oh, okay. glove compartment, and she pulls out balloons, and she oh, says, "Oh, I haven't seen these in years. They were actually condoms." <laughs> <laughs> uh, is Mandy driving with no hands? <laughs> God, I hope not. It's autonomous. She has a Tesla. That's <laughs> one of those stop a, autonomous. Light. I'm at a stoplight. Okay. <laughs> I'm just checking. Just checking. Is she allowed to take the uh, her hands off the steering wheel if she's, you know, uh, at a stoplight? Yeah, Tesla you can. <laughs> yeah. Um, I will never drive. So, you episode. know, I mean, I, I hear a bunch of adults talking about cartoons. Yeah. yeah. That guy must have made a fortune. I have a funny, have a funny story about uh, New York, just real quick, um, mm. if I can say it. Um, my daughter texted me, I guess it was yesterday, and said, Mom, I was shopping in the Upper East Side and with my friend, and we were getting ready to cross the street, and my friend said, hey, is that Brooke Shields? <laughs> was and she was coming towards us and I smiled at her and she smiled back at me she mm -hmm. goes and she goes she was shopping alone just like a regular woman that's awesome I love her and she said yeah she smiled back I was like you know this shopping thing, for jeans you, know, you mentioned that <laughs> and, and I'm trying to say remember I don't think I've ever bumped into a personality in New York City. Really? I was like what? so mad. I'm like, why didn't that happen like two weeks ago when I was there with you? Yeah. Yeah, but I it's never happened to me. I mean, the only time I've had a person I've had a personality with me is like I was doing a show and they came up to do the show. Hmm. Yeah. But I've never seen them out on the street. I've never gone, oh hey, look, there goes uh, so and so and there goes so and so. Wow. Yeah, but Who's you the had guy uh, Hmm? Used you to had, say hello uh, to you all the time on the street. Yeah, it was uh, uh, Gilbert. Gilbert Godfrey. Gilbert used Gilbert to yell Gilbert. and say yeah. you were you were still alive. <laughs> well, I did have Gilbert Godfrey from across the street yell out at yeah. the top of his voice. Alex, <laughs> still alive. He's still alive. Still <laughs> alive. Yeah. Well, well, my mom joke, was like, "How joke, did she, how did she even know he that?" He joked out. What I was going to say is the jokes on Gilbert. That's right. Oh. <laughs> bad Alex. Bad. It's not too early yet. I keep forgetting he's another one that died. That was yeah. Yeah. Really young. You know, I keep thinking. I mean, I have these really close friends, and then I remember them because you know our relationship was very close. But I mean, I knew Gilbert enough, and when he died, I was very put off by that because these are people that you don't expect it. You know. Um. And and that's that's the sad part about being eighty three, is all the people you know who die. Mm -hmm. And I I always love to tell the story about my mother who uh, um, she had a friend and her friend died, uh, and um, I, she was uh, she died at ninety three and my mother was ninety. And my mother said, you know who died today? And I said, who? And she said, so-and-so. And I said, oh, that's sad. And she says, yes, it's really sad. She was she was so young. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess it's all relative, you know. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But I mean, when Shecky went, I went, he's so young. I was right. He was only but 67. Yeah, that so definitely. My, yeah. my mother turns 95 in November and she's still really? going strong. Yep. 
Yeah. How's her? How's her? Uh, how's her brain? The brain is is I'd say ninety eight percent. I mean, she listens to Jeopardy at night. She remembers everybody's birthdays and phone numbers. You know, she's getting a little feeble. You know, she does use a walker now, but um, how old? She's good. How old is she? Ninety five. Ninety five. We have a, a lady who's a friend who's ninety nine, and yeah. could be a hundred pretty soon. Wow. wow. Yeah. I have a neighbor who is 102, yeah. <laughs> and she can't hear very well, and she can't see very well, but uh, um, when, when she sees me, she, she's up to date with all the news, you know, <laughs> I have to go uh, right Robert. in and uh, uh, right, right next to her face. Hi, Margie, this is Paula, <laughs> you know, well, my, but she's, she's terrific, she's 102. You know what? problem, as you have noticed today, is names, and some days I'm fine with names, some mm. days I can remember names that it's ridiculous that i remember you know I've never other days it's terrible what that names has always been my weak point i do not remember names well yeah. i i have a hard time remembering names but it's not so much because i don't have a good memory but i'm so consumed by myself i don't take <laughs> into consideration anybody That's else true. You remember true. your own huh no that you, you, you do hear yourself. you do hear a lot more of more people it seems like to me that i've heard a lot more people that are lasting longer yeah uh, yes. you, you know you hear that. yes i mean just on the uh, on the in the sports this weekend mm. the, the buffalo you know whatever is Dion sanders and his buffalo whatever they are oh, uh, yeah. they got oh, a 98, 98 year old mascot lady that comes oh, out yeah. and you know that's dances great. around with them and i was like that's great yeah. Yeah. I was on 60 minutes last night yeah 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 <laughs> Peg, Peg, that's her name. Yeah. Peggy. Yeah. But you know what the bad part about being that old is? Nobody takes you seriously. Yeah. And no, nobody cares. Nobody really cares. Mm. You know? And I think somebody said, that, you know, you were mentioning it the other night, Kevin, when I was talking about uh, my landlord and how they're, what they're doing with us right now, trying to get us to pay money that they shouldn't be charging us. And and you said they always take advantage of older people. That's yeah. right. You yeah. know. And I said you should pull out the elder abuse card. Well, I'm going. <laughs> I'm going to. If I can, if my lawyer will return. My lawyer will return my calls. You know. Now come in with the cane. You'll be doing fine. Yeah. Start swinging that sucker, man. <laughs> yeah, raising cane. That's where I came from. <laughs> the other day, I was walking with the cane. It's new to me, right? It's a new world for me. And I'm walking, and these little kids are on skateboards. Little kids. Well, they love to play with and, them. And they almost bump into me, which would be make me fall for sure. Right? I have to be careful about those obstacles, right? And I've got the cane with me. And some woman, it might have been their mother, said, <laughs> hit them with the cane. <laughs> <laughs> Put it in their bicycle spokes. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Mike. How you doing up in Canada? I'm fantastic. I apologize for being tardy. There was a, a kind of a fun reason. Well, sort of fun. I had a client of mine call me up. His mom had died in the middle of August, which is That's always fun. That's really fun. That's fun. <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> Better than I Thanks for the picture. Uh, how, how did you continue? Did you, could you stop laughing? <laughs> Um, so he, uh, you know, I've been helping him. I'm not, she wasn't my client, but he's my client. So I've been answering questions along the way. Mm -hmm. And, uh, um, they've been going through her bank statements and they found this payment for $250 a month, every month to Canada life. Canada life is a gigantic insurance conglomerate that has bought many different insurance companies over the years. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, he doesn't speak insurance. So we just went on a fishing expedition and we called them and, uh, while they wouldn't tell us exactly how much it was, she had a life insurance policy that nobody knew about. Mm -hmm. And probably for in the neighborhood of, we would think between a half a million and a million dollars. And he had no idea that his mom had it. So kind of fun in the sense of, here you go, son. You know, so. Wow. But we're, they, they, they won't confirm it. They've got to get the claims department involved. And I'm not the agent on file, so they wouldn't say anything. But and and is, he the inherit, why, is he the inheritor of that money? He would be the, he's the only child. Oh, wow. um, he'll be the sole beneficiary. That's very nice. That's nice. 
Yeah. So anyway, we were on the phone, we were on hold, and then we were going through all the hoops to get them to tell us what they could tell us. And uh, obviously, they're comfortable enough because they took down all of his information and the claims department is going to be in, in process and talking to them. So um, in the next couple of days, he's going to be getting a very interesting email. No, nice. I'll tell you, I when I a couple of years ago, I watched, saw Alex Trebek on TV. And, Canadian legend Alex Trebek, yes. Yeah, and there were the three Ps, you know, <laughs> whatever. And so I went out and I bought the insurance. And if I die tomorrow, Mark, you're going to get five dollars and seventy-two. <laughs> Hot dog. I always wondered about that because you know, but you got to wait. You cannot years. be turned down. Yeah. Yeah, but you can be given the lowest price <laughs> back. You go, well, it's going to cost you a hundred dollars a month, <laughs> right? The price. Well, you got to last two years first of all. Yeah. yeah. You do. Oh yeah, you can't you get, get about you years. get about three thousand. Yeah, you yeah. got to last two years, otherwise they give you yeah. a premium. You get enough yeah. to buy the box. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I never. So does the does the um uh Canadian government have like an unclaimed property thing up there that they put out like we do down here in the U.S. Yeah, there's unclaimed we're... properties that you can look up, you know, social numbers and names mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Some of which uh, there are ones that are some of which where if you just pay the back taxes on them, you can have the property. Uh, I've heard of I've heard of things like that. Um, yeah, there are. Yeah, because um, you probably would have found it that way, too. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, that's amazing. Now, can I ask you one question real quick? I meant I, I didn't want to be late for this one here because I needed some advice. Um, I've got Dick Cavett coming on my show, and I wanted to know if you had any experiences with Dick Cavett back in the day, and, and yeah, had any I have. any stories that I could kind of ask him about. Yeah, you know, ask him why, why, Ask him why he was the most boring guest I ever. Oh, had. Come on. <laughs> I saw that coming. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we'll get the. If, okay, I didn't know who was still alive? Are you writing that down? Yeah, I said, <laughs> <laughs> good stuff here. He's gonna yeah. love this. No, note to oh, self: Try I, not to I yawn. Hear him one more time to say, to say, and then Groucho told me, you know, <laughs> yeah. I mean, "Come on, he's now naming people other people don't even remember." <laughs> you know, I mean, he's uh, coming on the show because, uh, well, he's uh, his position in broadcasting. But David Letterman actually sent. Dick a letter back when he was in Indianapolis getting started and Dick actually he, they had a correspondence together yeah yeah, yeah so yeah uh, but uh, uh, I, I don't know if he's a good guy or a bad guy my ex-wife used to work for him oh on the show she, she which was, wife she was booking uh, Ronnie oh she worked as a booker and then when that job was over with uh, she went over to work for Barbara Walters for 12 years oh. you know um, and, um, and, and, you know, so I, 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 I know a little bit about him, you know, um, I, I thought he was, I'll tell you, I go back and I watch some of his old interviews and I used to think he was an okay interviewer and I'm not so much now when I go back and watch those things, he, he's too much of a, uh, he's too much of a fan and not a person who's trying to get answers. That's exactly like me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> your but you're you've got a fanboy show is what you've got you know yeah. and so that fits but he didn't have a fanboy show right you know? he had the intellectual show yeah um you know I, I i mean he has had some funny lines i think the funniest line he ever had was um that uh, they had a, a railroad strike on the long island railroad uh, uh, no they uh, yeah no, there was a strike or whatever, but I know they said they, they took some guy and they tied him to the tracks of the Long Island Railroad. And the poor guy almost starved to death. <laughs> but that was a good one. <laughs> the other line was uh, out in Central Park, if you build a snowman, uh, they use marshmallows for the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, sorry, uh -huh. sorry, I don't I don't mean to be a pest, but I gotta go. I have I've worked. Nobody else here is working. Wait, 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 Since wait, Andy's wait. not at work, I'm the only one working here. So I gotta we go. Work, we only have one minute left. <laughs> I know, but I got a two o'clock meeting that for him. Right. Oh. 
And Mandy and I will sit here and put you down. Okay, <laughs> go ahead. Please. Mandy loves it when I leave early, so everybody says goodbye personally to me. So bye. Bye, Brian. Bye, bye. bye. Brian. <laughs> All right, now yeah. we can talk about him. I, I, I love you, people. You were so much fun. <laughs> oh, I never gave you hell about. I went back and watched the show when I was there. <laughs> Is she gone? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the hard kidding I was talking about earlier. Yeah. Is she gone? Yeah, I did do that, didn't I? Uh, Thank God. <laughs> Thank God she's out of here. It was very Aren't nice to be here, by the way. Really, it's it's always a pleasure. Uh, you're you're a very nice person, and we think the world of you okay <laughs> and and yep. and len same thing with you you've been here you know yeah, I, I, hope eventually I live long enough i can say well of course paula has been here she stays here and will come again yeah well, i've only i've met three and marjorie years. anytime you want to stay here let me <laughs> <laughs> we'll do i haven't okay. been in the video there but we shared a steak and shake though <laughs> yes we did right. yes that's we right. did yes we did yeah. anyway that's about it you know gotta go <sighs> time to do what i can do when i'm not doing anything <laughs> anyway uh marjorie thank you so much for joining us uh today appreciate it paula wonderful having you here as always scott bodiker you didn't say much of anything but you know <laughs> What can I say, except you're deep in the heart of, and uh, so is, in fact, uh, is, uh, you know, it's funny, we have two guys from Texas here, yeah. and Charlie Wallace, <clears throat> down there in Austin, which, by the way, I watched a documentary on Charles Whitman, the guy who went up to the yep. tower and started shooting everybody in Austin back when I was working. 1966. Yeah. Huh? It was August 1st, 1966. And I he went was up in towers, didn't he? Yeah, you know? and I was working, I was working in Houston, Texas, and we got word on that happening in, in Austin. And um I, I the thing that kind of was significant about it, that was the first mass shooting in America. That's that's yep. if some guy invented it, it was Charles Whitman. <laughs> From Texas. Story. Very yeah. interesting. What? <laughs> From Texas. From Texas. Don't mess with anybody with the initial CW. <laughs> you got a point there, Charlie Wallace. Uh, and, uh, Len LaFrisco, thank you for joining us. Of course, Kevin, what can I say? I love having you here. And uh, uh, Jeff, uh, wonderful. And Mike, uh, short time, but, you know, whatever. And uh, say hello to, to Dick for me. Probably doesn't remember me. And, All right. Uh, <laughs> And Mandy, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. And everybody, why don't you give a big wave goodbye? But, 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 Bye. but, Edward Berger signs us off. What, 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 what are you pointing down for? Is he down? Oh, because he's, 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 below he's right below me on my. Oh, oh well, uh, here he's. The secret square. That's right. That's right. Yeah. This way. Um, so. Here's Edward Berger to sign us off by saying, "That's all, folks. Bye, bye, everybody. Bye, See you next week. Bye, bye."